And, you know, for us, you know, there, there are certain bottom lines we could be thinking about here as we go through the course, uh, you know, and who cares about this? You know, wh why, why even look at this? And I think there are several interconnected reasons uh, that will be coming out throughout the course. Uh, the first, you know, observing how the New Testament writers behave as they engage the Old Testament. Uh, and I think, you know, those of you who might be a little familiar with things that I've written before, uh, and maybe your own thinking just uh, in, in the same sense, uh, we tend to, well, we tend, I, should, I shouldn't globalize this, but there is a tendency out there to, uh, to come at the Bible with certain assumptions of how it should work theologically. But I found that watching just how the Bible behaves, just watching it work, in its environment, again, that's key. Um, what sorts of things were they expecting? What sorts of things were questions were they interested in answering? So, so watching the New Testament writers behave as they engage the Old Testament is very, very important, uh, more so than coming at it with preconceived notions as much as that's possible. Um, and related to that, these are all interconnected, to see their writings, the, the writings of the New Testament authors, as a phenomenon of their historical setting. So, I mean, for example, um, you know, we talk a lot in the Old Testament about, well, understanding Genesis chapter 1, it helps to know something about the setting of the ancient world, and we have things like Babylonian creation stories or whatever that help us give a historical context and setting. When we come to the New Testament, uh, you know, Jesus is forever, you know, contending with Pharisees. Well, a historical kind of question to ask there is, uh, who were Pharisees? How did they fit into the scheme of the first century? That's a historical question. Um, our topic, the New Testament use of the old, is also a historical phenomenon because the way the New Testament writers approach the old um, has, a, well, it fits in the world of first century Judaism and earlier uh, very, very well. Um, if, if you knew nothing of the New Testament, other than it was sort of a Jewish sectarian document, you never really heard of Jesus. But if you knew the world of Judaism of the time very, very well, and somebody handed you a New Testament, they might ask, I'm not sure who this Jesus person is, but here we go again with this hermeneutical interpretive adventure, these creative approaches uh, to, to handling their sacred text. So it's part of the historical setting. And then the last part there, you know, to... For us to accept, for those of us who, who are in the place where this interests us, or maybe it's something that we really want to do, to accept the theological and doctrinal challenge of studying this phenomenon. Because as I said, this has meant a lot to me um, in terms of my own faith journey, in terms of my own approach to reading the Bible. And it did so by sort of deconstructing some things that I had always thought that I had been taught to assume about the nature of the Bible. Um, I sometimes, uh, you know, joke around with uh, my students or on my website, and I say things like, uh, the Apostle Paul couldn't get a job interpreting the Bible in the seminary that taught me about the Apostle Paul. And I think that's very true. What Paul does and what the gospel writers do with their scripture is... Um, not something that, you know, we sort of, uh, you know, it's not like falling off a log for us. It takes some work to really get into it and to try to understand it. So those are three issues that I think that are interconnected here that we're, you know, going to keep revisiting in, in, um, during, during the next six weeks.